Got it. Got it. Found the problem. Howdies and salutations, y'all. Oh, I need to update the stream details because we're back up in chatty mode again. Um. Let's see. I think it's reasonable to tag this as chatty. I mean, we'll see. We'll see where we're at at the end of this. But, uh... <clears throat> Let's see. I can tag this millennia. Sure. Whatever. It's not like I'm consistent or in any way actually plan out my tags in a way that maximizes SEO at all. Or even Twitch optimiz search optimization. DSO? I don't know. But anyway, yes, we are back. Hope y'all had a good Wednesday. I certainly needed the crash day, and I um, appreciate that it's something I can do, but I'm also real excited to be back at this one again. <laughs> Partly, I'll admit, because the worst or second worst, but one of the two nastiest bits is now behind us. And I'll be honest, I was bracing myself to crack this open again today and think like, oh, you know, we went back and forth on the, on the fluff part. I really wasn't sure. We tried a bunch of different stuff. I was bracing to look at it and think, wow, that really just doesn't work. And I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, obviously, it's, um, you know, not <laughs> uh, not exactly what we aimed for. Originally, it's not a one-to-one -one of the actual design. But especially without the line work, I think it actually, like, looks really... Uh, it's a cool way to do these. I'm quite happy with it. Um... I, it, we'd need a little more of the difference between it and the cloth, perhaps, but yeah, I mean, look at that. It's got defined shape. It looks decent. It's actually comparatively low effort once you figure out the volume of it, which we did in our outlining phase because I overdid on that stage, but worth it. Um, oh, yeah. The other thing is looking at it with fresh eyes. That You know, it's interesting both with and without the dark. I do think that this is... A better composition truthfully um like obviously if we cleaned it up and we did some other like doodads odds and ends i think that this would probably look better in the final piece but i also no longer think that this looks horrible i just think it looks more comic booky than i was originally aiming for um the really deep blacks there so you know i'm gonna keep it i'm not gonna merge the layers i'm just gonna leave them as two options we'll look at it at the end maybe we'll do two versions maybe we'll uh We'll decide once we have the holistic view in place. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it alone for now. The other thing, and this is definitely not a to toot my own horn thing, but we're venturing into territory that is stuff I've truthfully not really done before ever. Um, this level of like value planning and actually this level of detail in art is something that I haven't attempted with this degree of precision in a, ever. Um, so I'm... I'm happy to acknowledge failures, but I'm also going to acknowledge where stuff actually works. And um, the textures are working better than I expected. The fluff is very clearly defined as such. The fabric is defined as such. The metal really does look like dented and warped metal. We can always do more on all of those, of course. Well, maybe not the fluff. We've seen what happens there. But we, we could do a little more on the on the metal to capture it. But I think I think it looks really like surprisingly good there. The one place that we have done and that I'm not super stoked on yet. Obviously, like, the skin, you know, we'll, we'll deal with skin. Um, but we, we spent, like, ten minutes on it and just blasted it out because I knew the fluff was going to be the problem. Um, but the fabric is inconsistent. Um, and I'm torn. Because on the one hand, these darker sections over here with their folds and everything, they capture the overall shape of the fabric really well. Um, or at least pretty well. Honestly, there's room to improve. They're they're the weakest part of the drawing, um, but they do some things right. However, I think the this part over here <laughs> looks really cool. It just looks a little less fabricy, and so I'm trying to figure out the right balance there, and if there's some middle ground or how I need to think through it. I'm glad it's distinct from the fluff. I'm glad it's, I'm definitely glad it's distinct from the metal, um, but it's it's um something that I need to consider further. But not today, because frankly, fabric and fluff were two of the nastiest things, and I think it's time we had a day that wasn't the nastiest things to deal with. And to that end, let's finally move up face and helmet words. Um, don't get me wrong, 
I'm not blowing these off. They're still going to be a challenge, no question. Um, however, I feel like they'll probably be less of a challenge. At least, they'll be more of a challenge in level of detail, but perhaps less of a challenge in terms of trying to plot out new methods. Wow, that... Man, those fluff scribbles really just kind of work, don't they? Even, like, zoomed up. Like, it doesn't look great, the, the black shadows especially, you know, it's pretty clear, but, like, it works. Huh. Okay. I, I've got a technique that I'm going to have to do some further refining on. Interesting. Okay, now hold on. This was my... Which of these was my original gray? Uh-oh. Was it the 42? My middle gray. Nope, that's... Hold on. Okay, yeah, it was the 42. This is our bonus one. So we won't we won't mess with it for now. Um, I did just want to... Real quick, while we're still in here... A little bit back there. Because that is technically more fluff back there. Um, it's just a... Uh... Of a, of, yeah, deeper in the shadows. There we go. There, there we go. Now it all seems to connect and kind of work. Yeah. Okay. Then we won't get too caught up on that. We're going to keep going on our color scheme here, trying to keep it consistent. And we're finally going to get to some more... I mean, we had light yesterday, obviously. We had really bright light yesterday. And we'll have a little more of that today. Uh, not too much. We've done most of the really bright highlights already. But getting into our upper half of the value range, because we've spent a lot of time in the lower half of late, um, or in the hyper high contrast, but like here should be interesting. So in the context, we've kind of, we've got our neutral tone as the skin tone, which is fine. Honestly, it's perfectly, perfectly reasonable. And I know I said we were getting into light, but we're jumping straight into darker tones first. Um, first off, the entirety of the chin. I'm going to have to be careful to not make this look too sharp. Um, because we want to make sure that we're getting underlining from the other side over there. But we also want to make sure the bottom doesn't look just completely flat. Or else that's going to be a little awkward. And once again, it really makes me appreciate the quality of the 3D model on this. Holy cow. How did, how did the game do stuff like that? It's crazy. Let's see. But it should also, as we get back here, be a little more consistently dark. We can keep it up to the line. Because there is a less dark shadow I guess it's just our middle tone, huh? I guess I'd have to live with using this one for all of that if I want to do that. Which isn't the end of the world. We can try it. It's just going to once again make this look a little more comic booky or Jojo-y if I get too defined on the face like this. Um, and that's the challenge with this, with trying to do this on a face, is because this style, the way that the contrast works without having to do like gradients is through having a lot of these little detailed zones. Even like um, over here, like this little piece adds a ton of texture um, by having that detailed indentation. But skin is really smooth. <laughs> and so you don't necessarily have the detail to do the gradient or like the actual gradient to do it. Something I'll have to figure out. Because I definitely do want this to at least look like it's the shadow being cast by this. So it should follow it in pattern roughly. And then this is just the under shadow. Mouth shadows we'll figure out, but it's not an immediate thing. These actually get to be pretty dark shadows. We may do the full black, um, or at least the close to black on those. We'll see. For now, I'm just going to get in here like this.
wonder if the fill would be beholden to these lines. I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's a setting that could make it. I'm mainly just worried if the lines are concrete enough to actually, like, hold it. And it's got pretty good ability to deal with that. So, yeah, maybe. Shouldn't be nitpicking at this level of detail at this stage, because it's only going to get tweaked and adjusted more first. Okay, I'm just going to leave that. Maybe the shadow really should be, like, a little sharper. But not too much sharper. It's still on the f comparatively soft skin surface. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Of course, this is, like, too much variance. It ought to be... All closer up in there. And then this is one that gives the face a lot of shape, and the helmet too, truthfully, is having the shadow follow the nose like that. So I need to make sure that it follows it in a way that makes sense. And we're not missing out on details. I think that we're about right there. And I may even... No, I don't want to do that. But knowing that... Any piece of the nose that's visible through here is also going to be fairly dark, but not full-on black. Fortunately, I, my helmet alignment is still off, and we're just dealing with that. But it does mean that we're going to have to deal with the nose being a little less visible through here than I'd like. We'll still have the underneath helm that's pretty visible, though. We'll get, we'll get some weight out of that visor. And try this one. I just want to be real careful with it. Otherwise we'll end up with like a crooked nose look, which would be fine, but wouldn't be true to the character particularly. I guess, you know, maybe at this point. Okay, so that line is going to work as a border. Awesome. <sighs> I am genuinely a little miffed that I locked myself out of the ending that I wanted in Elden Ring. I mean, you know, maybe I'll play again, but it's taken me a year, an actual year, and I still haven't finished it. <laughs> Future playthroughs may be faster. I wouldn't feel obligated to fully explore every area when I know what I'm interested in seeing again and what I'm not. But, like, even so. Okay. The other challenge for the face is, should the face be one tone lighter? Because I'm constantly torn. Because on the one hand, no, I don't think it's sufficiently different to justify being more like the top half of this than the bottom half, truthfully. But on the other hand, it would provide more actual contrast where the illustration doesn't necessarily, and we could be helping emphasize the difference between the skin and the helmet. We'll start being authentic to it and go from there, but it is going to mean darker lips, which we're just going to have to deal with. I mean, nothing wrong with it. It's just not necessarily what I have been planning. Granted, I didn't have much in the way of plans on these, so we'll just see if they look good. I, I'm mainly just worried that when you go too dark on this this kind of thing, um, on the value, like obviously we can do different color, and that may end up being what we have to do is same value, different hue. Um, that is an option, but we'll try it with this first. Um, Obviously in here would be even darker. And back here actually kind of is too. And then once again, we're getting back into whatever happens. There are clear lighter sections. Like a little rim highlight there. I'm trying to stay true to the art piece first, and then we'll zoom out, see how it looks. Like, true to the original, I should say. And then we'll zoom out, see how it looks, and adjust based on that. The other thing is that, like, a considerable part of the bottom lip is already in that phase. And some parts of it are even in, like, a, a stage lighter. 
as is true of some areas down here that I'm going to have to be very careful about picking out without accidentally making it look like she has a giant chin. Something that I know from experience, let's just say. Adding too much definition to this part. It's sort of like when you're trying to draw a face and, and like you don't fully, like you're practicing and so you're like, oh, I want to draw a detailed face. And you notice that people have little like smile lines next to their mouth. And so you add it and they immediately look like they're 75. And you're like, why? The lines are actually there on stinking everyone. Why does it add so much age? And it's because without the context of all the other shadow, the lines look way more defined than they should be. And since we're not doing gradients, this can accidentally add too much definition to the chin if we're not careful. Actually, I'll be honest, I think the lips look fine like that. That looks pretty decent. This part we're going to need to work on. I mean, it's again, it's technically authentic. The original, but it still looks off. So I may have to like make it more mild. Mainly, I just worry it draws too much attention. Like, it's not a focal point in the main piece. It's a point of reflection, but it's not... I guess it kind of is. It's... Hmm. Maybe it technically should even... I mean, it is this lighter tone. It almost, like, theoretically could be one of the even lighter bits. As could this, but I don't know that that adds all that much. Eh, the one on the lip's fine with or without, so I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to leave those as is. We'll see how they look with the whole grand scheme of things once other stuff is ready. But all in all, that's it's not too bad. I'm not trying to get too much texture on the face. Because um, the main, like when you really look at it, the focal point of this piece is the unalloyed gold, uh, the helm. And then, of course, like, yes, obviously, there's direction of movement, and it's her, but this helmet in particular, the really definitive parts of her design, are clearly designed to be focal points. Okay. Problem A. This part also kind of needs to be dark. Not that dark, though. But it's going to blur with the face. Um, these lines are really dark. Ridges. We'll, <laughs> we'll add them. We'll see if they're too definitive, and if we need to back off on them a little. Um, but yeah, looking at the metal, this sort of patchily gets into between our neutral tone, our, our tr what I've been calling the neutral tone back when it was a 5 palette. And it may yet be a 5 palette, so I'm going to keep the name. And then one one value lighter. Let me fix my posture a little bit so I can get some longer strokes going in here. Doop, doop, instead of doop, doop, doop. Oh boy, you can tell that I'm not warmed up completely yet. Although we're getting there. We're 20 minutes in, I'd hope we'd be getting there, but even so... Um, This is another one of those instances where a sixth tone would be nice because it's going to be too bold on this pure black, but it's going to be too light or not bold enough compared to that one, most likely, um, if we don't do pure black. So having a middle tone in between that wasn't the pure black hyper shadow, but was still darker than this one would be nice. And I know there's definitely ways to do this without that, so I'm trying to figure out where like, I could account for that on future ones, future pieces, and make sure that my color palette is a better mix. But so far, we're doing okay. Yeah, this black is too dark. We'll, we'll do the gray on it. Uh, feeling like this won't work. Okay. Right. Always got to remember that that's not the background. Hmm. 
Hmm. Shame because those really weren't bad lines. But can't get too attached to them. This is just an excuse to practice the lines more. Right, raster layer. Honestly, the black line next to the dark gray, and then having a gray line here, even though, like in the original, they're the same value. But it kind of works in terms of relative to their environments. Let me leave it as that. That said, it needs a little cleanup. Just a hair, though. I don't want to get overly nitpicky on this. I say as I objectively get overly nitpicky on it. Hmm. Okay. So now, continuing on our journey upwards, I'm actually going to jump over here for just a little bit because it's one of the few proper black areas that even if we did a, a sixth hue, or rather a sixth value, same hue of nothing, um, but a sixth value, this would still be a pure black zone. Full stop. You can tell I'm doing it with my wrist again instead of with my arm. There we go. Interesting what it found there. Sometimes it's even a little too sensitive about what is and isn't a border, but I honestly kind of appreciate that. Makes things easier. Most of the time. Huh. Now the catch is that I know... We're going to eventually have to continue this black shadow all the way across, or perhaps dark gray shadow. We'll see. But that one probably is a black shadow. Um, but we're going to have to deal with the different hair texture in there, and that may be a today's stream thing, but I doubt it. Hair texture is going to be an interesting challenge. Um, which is why we are I made a point of... I was tempted to be like, oh, I'll just do the helmet, because I was tired on Tuesday. And I was like, no... Don't make yourself figure out the fur and the hair back to back. That's going to be madness. Um, and you're going to have a terrible time of it. And I was right. If I'd done that, I would have absolutely been furious with myself. I'm sure we've all had curse you past me moments. Let's see. I don't want to get too much detail in here because it'll end up looking because it, you know this isn't necessarily like shape detail in here this is just genuinely texture from either the wear of the metal the way it was created or um just dirt on it we'll see say as i get way too detailed on it I think through my texture a little more. Without accidentally making it look like the fur. Which will be a challenge. <laughs> Given that the fur was just like default scribbles. So I can make it look a little bit like it's just bends catching the light differently. Jags on the edges. See, that looks like way too much of a human-made form.
Yep, I think sure enough. Keeping it to mostly edge edge wear is, uh, I think, going to be where we want the detail to be focused. So. And then also knowing that eventually it gets more just in the shadows. And then as with everything, the actual edge wear on this one is going to be comparatively darker just because everything on it because of its angle is a little comparatively darker. We'll see. There we go. We're starting to get the like the burnished through wear kind of look here. And eh, we could probably extend that further even. Really lean into it. We'll have to think about this far piece as well. Which wildly... These are the same color, but just from the context of the other shadows, my brain's already interpreting it as darker, which is really funny to me. We're getting enough of the form in place that it's doing some of the heavy lifting for us. Always nice. Not necessarily what we need, but we'll accept it where we get it. As always, I have these slightly worn edges. There's going, they're not going to be nice smooth edges. And even a little bit of it appears to be catching the light. Isn't that nice? A little bit of normal color wear on the back, too. Maybe we've got a little too much of it on there. The back segment. I mean, we can always try to do the texture that it has, where it's got kind of this stripe, these sort of rough scraggle stripes on it. But I think that's ultimately going to end up being kind of too distracting from the main overall color. Especially because, once again, there's just a pretty big gulf between these two colors. So they're distractingly different. Yeah. Like, we can try to get into a lot of detail and, like, connect it to the edges and, like, just have it, like, showing through in a few places. But even so, like, even really breaking with sort of the spirit of what we're trying to do here, it still isn't going to look the way we want it to. So no, I wouldn't. Okay. We'll leave it like that for now. <laughs> Reasonable. Let me think I'm going to add a little more of like the light edge to this just for to catch any edge glints and highlights there too. With this, we truly can. We can get some of the burnished look in it. We just have to be careful that we don't end up making it look too artificially patchy, which, of course, is what it actually is. But, like, you have to be careful about it. So far, looking reasonably plausible. Part of that is, but I'm trying to keep sort of the flow may not be the right word, but it's the word I'm going to use. Um, I'm trying to keep the flow of these as going kind of along this line rather than just being open patches in their own way. And that seems to make it look more, I don't know seems to look better. I couldn't tell you exactly why, but it definitely does seem to be. 
And we can even have a few potentially like along higher as long as they're in that same sort of flow. Then we'd want vaguely similar things on this one, but again, like it's its points are really like just generally overall darker. If there's anything in it, it would actually seem to be more black, which again would have to be more along the lines of that darker shade tone if we really wanted it to not overly pop out. Because yeah, like it see it immediately catches the eye too much. So I'm going to leave it alone for now and not get too caught up on that. And I'm going to focus real quick on this piece because I think it's interesting. Obviously neutral color into the darker gray once again, and then eventually gradient even into the black. But it's how we want to represent this edge between the colors. Um, because obviously it's still a curved piece. So it has to overall follow kind of the curve, like a line arcing like this, or potentially even like one with slightly showing the curvature, although getting one that actually represented this well in a single line would be tough. But generally speaking, nope. Something more like that. Which to be fair, even on the original, with all the shakiness, it, it does generally follow. Oops. Yeah. Wrong color. Boop. We'll go back in and do some cleanup on those edges because they're not great. Funny how brains work. I uh, was trying to undo the part that I hadn't colored yet because in my mind that was the part that was wrong and undo fixes wrong things. And then I had to correct myself and say, wait, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not entirely true. Generally speaking, yes, but your schema is incomplete, my friend. Let's see. What's interesting about this one is that even like as it arcs back, we've got like a little more over here. That's in a similar way. Oops. Helps give it a little texture, but also potentially it'll... We're going to have to add some black to this. Just full on, there's there's deep black in there. Even in like... Not like... Even if we add the sixth tone, there's going to be some deep black shadows in this part. The high contrast really helps the face pop. It's an important part of it. And it makes sense from the shadows. Yeah. That definitely does look curved now, though. Just really considerably more bold than I'd expected. Um, and I do want to look at my edges on the metallic to make sure I'm keeping the same energy slightly oops, the slightly warped, but then also with occasional angular ones where there's a notable dent. I may tweak my degree of warpage over here a little bit. Just a naturally unsteady stroke does wonders on these. Letting your hand sort of do the wobbles it wants to do that I'm normally fighting against. Great. Now for the fun slash hard part. This really does even vanish into the darker gray. A little high up. We'll try to capture that. Sure, that's where the edge is. There was kind of a line there, to be fair. Okay, yeah, no, there fully was. You're right, that is where the edge is. Sure. <laughs> okay. Now this is the part I didn't want to do too much, and we won't do too much, but just as a placeholder, 
we're going to sort of be following along actual hair patterns in here a little bit. It's just going to end up looking like cartoony hair quickly if I'm not careful. Let's see. Because I know that there's like this little patch at the top and that, that it has these moments where it extends down further into the hair. I want to try to be representing that all together. Rats. That's what I get for doing that as one line without pauses. They're just erased where my line went over, but that's fine. Okay, thinking about this. Once again, that's just sort of all of the hair. The direction is going to be dependent on the direction that the hair flows, not the direction of the actual helmet that they're sort of pushing against. Just going to have to keep remembering that. It's easy to just go perpendicular to whatever surface you're drawing against, and that's not right in this case. Here's I actually didn't bring the black quite up far enough. Interesting. Just like a little bit of cleanup. Yeah, see, we're going to have to get the darker darker uh, values in the hair and all that jazz, or else this is going to pop way too much. And even then, once again, some of, some of that, some of this black is definitely going to be the full black. Some of it, if we do the sixth tone, is going to be the sixth tone. And, um... I'm, I'm going to continue doing with the assumption of both right now. Um, because I think they're both interesting pieces. They just have a different look. And I'm not entirely sure which of those looks would be more interesting to work on right now. So I'm just going to leave them both. Okay. And this is where this sort of burnished -y metal part gets really interesting. I have to be careful. That it doesn't look too sharp like the hair. These are more blunt shifts, more rounded, softer. They're just the shifts of where the metal has little warps here and there. That are represented by just kind of, again, a wobbly hand. And obviously a little bit of intention with that wobbly hand helps. Then, yeah, again, we'll get into the full darks up there. Keep on continuing like so. Hmm. We'll see. Definitely not that straight line, though. Yeah, it almost looks like she's bleeding out of the helmet, which isn't exactly what I'm going for here. So we're going to... Specifically on the metallic parts, because the hair is, again, once we get the darker contrast hair, we'll see how that one looks fully. But for the metallics, we're going to go for much less detail on these edges because the dark really makes any little detail pop and it's too much we really want this to just be kind of the soft weird odd dents and curves of this so nothing sharp 
Nothing with too much direction to it. And that's, that's considerably better. That's believable as shadow. Although, again, some of these really still need to be smoothed out. Not because they don't look believable, but because they just looked like stray strokes. I do need to think about the overall shadow shape matching the curve, though. So I'm going to bend all of this up a little bit. And eke it along there. See how that looks. It makes more sense with the overall curvature of the shape. We'll do a similar thing over here where it's curving back down, and which it kind of actually does. Um, and I didn't fully capture. Smooth up to match the curve. There we go. There we go. Now our shadow is supporting the same shadows, the other middle tones, and they're looking like they're creating the same shape, so it looks a lot more cohesive and also, you know, actually correct. Um, I'm going to do a similar dealy bop under here. This eventually converges into just a real fine line, but at this thing's apex, it's actually coming out pretty far, which is, of course, what the shadow would actually do. And it won't come out as far on this part because there's not as much distance between the overlap and the hangout. And you can actually see that on here, the point where it goes, there's like a little, there's an edge where it's clear that there's more shadow on the skin than there is on this piece. And then like kind of soft ones on up. These could even, potentially shift into being the gray shadows again. I'm going to leave a little black border, but I am probably going to... Oops, that's our darker gray. Let's see, yep. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like we're getting a little too much going on in this area. But really, more distinctively, there's a lot going on and then a very clear focal point that's drawing, like, too much attention. Um, what I perhaps need to do, overall, is make this shadow a little bigger and bolder. Which, in truth, it should be coming out to at least this point, so... Uh, extend it to match a little better. Always got to keep in mind those relative positions. They're really important. Okay. There we go. It's still a problem, but a considerably less of one. Let's look at the relative position of this. How far has that come out? A little bit past the point. I might be able to extend it a tiny bit, but not a whole lot, truthfully. Still, I think mainly the top needs to come out more. So we'll do that. And it still looks a little bit like a giant albanuric eyeball. We'll have to see if getting the actual full shading of the helm helps with that. This part's definitely not helping with the eyeball look. Um, okay. Oops, didn't mean to do that. We can start to get some of the stuff in here. 
Let's see, most of which is going to be the darker tone, methinks. Although it could passively be neutral tone too, which is interesting. We're going to go for darker tone for now. Really get that going in there. Hmm. Just looking at it as a whole for a moment. You know, in terms of lightness and the context of the whole piece, I think there's a few things we need to lighten up. First off, as I'd kind of expected, let's make that a neutral tone. We can redefine that with lighter edges. But secondly, I think I hadn't fully guessed this, but it seems more right to have this be brighter. And we'll have to adjust the relative shadows. And then to have a patch in here that is similarly so. That's going to make it look even more like an eyeball, isn't it? Like a really big floppy eyeball. I don't like that. don't like that concept at all. Um. <laughs> okay, let's look at it more like this. Because the overall color on these is more in that gold. It, it's, it is distinct from the skin. It's more in the same tier as this, which makes sense. It's the same material and similar lighting angle. Um, honestly, this one may still may be still dark, which is funny. I... Now the catch is on the flip side of what we've done before. I may take the neutral tone as our shade into both. Um, larger patches up here. And here. Be careful with the fill tool, it leaves really jagged edges. No anti-aliasing at all. I need to figure out what's happening with that, because it's... According to the settings, it's supposed to have some. Um, so I'm not sure where the heck that's going, because it sure as heck isn't showing up anywhere I see.
I'm cleaning up all that little detail work because it's too high contrast now. Oh, give me a second. My eyes tired. It's starting to water. Which, uh, makes it a tiny bit harder to uh, focus and draw. I'm taking away that one as being super dark and putting it in just as this level of dark. See if that gets us a good contrast still. It's still pretty darn dark compared to its surrounding areas. You can tell I've got my... Wow, my posture really just deteriorates so fast. Yep. There's wobbly line if we want to leave it like that. Not great. But with some texture, it might be great, and if not, we can add better line. And that does look like a reflection, but just not really actually what I want it to look like, so... <laughs> Oh, rats. I forgot. <laughs> Ugh, I can still taste the lettuce. Didn't realize it had such a lingering taste. Not the worst thing in the world. It's just not really what I want to taste right now. I'd rather not taste anything. I'm not eating. Ah, the necessity of eating is such an inconvenience. Even nice food, it's lovely and you appreciate it, but, like, it is kind of a pain when you're trying to focus on something. That's kind of working. I, I may give it, once again, just kind of the edge treatment. Get some of these shadows down along the edge. A little bit of variance to it. We'll clean up that under bit, don't worry. Including some that have been sitting there for a little while. Okay. I don't know if a black edge there makes a lot of sense. Also been thinking just entirely in too dark of a color palette for our whoops for our metal sections here because looking back at what I did originally even it was only in the darkest of the dark sections on this that I even went to the lower gray and like a lot of that could be argued to be in the solid black zone but I think it also worked well so I may continue that trend where I try to shift all of a lot of this stuff up one set of tones. Not two sets of tones though. Whoops. Still can't bring myself to make that one fully like it, but we can trim down on some of this a little bit. The hyper high contrast of this area is drawing too much attention, honestly.
Oh. Whoops, that line just got way out of control, didn't it? Smooth out these borders a little bit, shall we? Border so jagged they'll lead to a conflict in 30 years. Okay, let's see. Still has the eyeball effect, but it's less jarring, and ultimately this looks better lighter. I think we're getting too much detail in this section down here. If I want these little insets, I just need to make them softer. I'm gonna smooth them out and round them. Kind of like ladybug patches, though, um, so I'll have to be careful to avoid too much of anything like that. That's that. That's going to need some work. I'll have to tweak exactly how much. Maybe we leave those just the solid for now. It seems too eye-catching, but uh, we'll see. Because these details aren't necessarily doing anything. I'll leave some of the edges, edge stuff. I think that's worth it. That's part of the line itself. That's ah, gotten a little messy. Okay. I think that'll look better once we get the helmet into. In fact, it's 9 o'clock, so we're going to take a five minute break here in just a second. But before we do that, let's do a little broad color blocking. Because once again, I got too caught up in details and didn't do my color blocks. And I always pay for that dearly. I'm going to do just quick fills to get this stuff in here. In front of this is going to be even lighter, of course, as are potentially a lot of these actual loops. Um, whoops, nope, not that one. This one. There we go. Uh, this will probably still be a mid-gray. Back here, parts of back here are definitely still going to be a mid-gray as well. Um, just rough blocking it in again. Figure out our areas first. And then we'll figure out our nice edges second. Just like that's a bad shape for it, but it's roughly where it needs to be. Um, these are they're hard to fill, so I don't like bothering. Um, these are genuinely easier to actually color in than they are to fill tool. But they're still slower to do it that way, so still tooling it for now. Actually kind of satisfying watching it pop in. Ah, rats. Got a bit I didn't mean to. There we go, leaving that. Well, now some of this will be darker, some of it will be maybe a little lighter even, especially in some of these center patches. Um... We've got like a real bright highlight here, um, potentially one in here, and a little bit up there. 
just demarking these. We'll, uh, we'll do more tweaks later, of course. These are at minimum going to be this dark, but probably not going to go full black. And we may actually rethink some of the stuff that has been full black. Um, we're going to go to lighter tone for any of the openings we can see in there. We'll have to tweak some of those, of course. Because they really ought to just be full-on transparent, shouldn't they? Shouldn't they? So let's... Uh, we can erase those. Um, I do want to make sure we're capturing the right... some amount of mid-tone grays from this. Or mid-hue... or no, mid... mid. No, it's certainly mid. None of those lines are in the right place, but again, if we just block them in now, we can correct them later. And truthfully, you can even see the darker patches underneath it where it's relevant. Ah, <sighs> yeah. We'll have to clean that up. But that's actually not terrible. We'll just clean up how we're gradienting it a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Gradient's a verb now. We're just going to live with that. Um, we're going to get some of the darker ones in here in between the spots. It's both true to form and adds good contrast. Except for rats. Except for that one. Which was incorrect, but did still add good contrast. Oh, interesting that that's kind of a connected set right now. We'll have to fix that. Uh, but in the meantime, I can just go ahead and do that part myself. Okay. Most of these are going to be mid grays. Some of them are going to, well, yeah, some of them are going to mostly mid, some lighter tones. We'll grab a seven and just blast some of these in real quick. Now we may end up deciding that some of this should be generally lighter than mid gray. Um, we'll see. Because it's not really making sense where these highlights are relative to the actual light source on this, so I'll have to do some more thinking on this one before I go commit to it. But yeah. Then we might we might get some darker gray back here, but I kind of doubt it, truthfully. I mean, that's looking better in like six minutes than the section below it that we spent the first hour on really nitpicking and overthinking does so we'll we'll do we'll do some thought we'll do a little cleanup we'll soften we'll most likely soften some shadows and such even if they you know in the original would be full dark there's something to be said about tweaking it for readability and also just because this edge from the autofills looks bad and because this one looks uh just too dark in there. That may be the secret to some of the skin stuff is we make it less dark. Just in general. We'll see. We'll see. I keep saying we'll see and not stopping. So I'm actually going to go and take that pause real quick. I will see you all in just a couple minutes. I uh, hope to see you on the flip side.
Howdies and salutations, y'all. Welcome back. I guess I'm welcome, welcoming myself back, but you know, same energy. Uh, yeah. So this is one of those, and I've been doing it a fair bit, but it's something I always need to do more. Is let's look at it, zoom down, and see how the focal focal points are doing. Um, and uh, yeah, once the hair is darker, it'll provide a good contrast for the back of the helm. I think that the lighting on the helm overall is good. The lighting on the face overall is actually not terrible, although the shadow is uh. A little too bold here, methinks. Like, it might be better to just do without shadow on that bit. Have it kind of naturally pop out, like so. So roughly following the actual shape of that. Let's see. I think that's better that gives that a little more definition and uh yeah even zooming in i will say this being light definitely feels right now like it felt off and we didn't have the counterbalance of the helm but now that the, that whole section is there it's like oh yeah definitely obviously um i do think like the shadow is honestly fine this part's a little too much but once we have the darker in fact i may since we're in color blocking mode. Whoops, not the opacity. The look. What am I doing over there anyway? Zoom. There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the darker for this section. Because not all the hair is darker. And trying to do a fill probably won't get me what I want. But this part definitely is. Yeah, see that goes probably a little too far. We could maybe get away with that part being... Um, but yeah, just like roughly speaking, that. And now the helm looks pretty good, actually. <sighs> In a way, this has been... You could almost consider this one of the, just the full-on long style study, but I do think it's a fair to say it's fan art and gnome piece. It's just clearly we're drawing directly off this reference. The next thing I would like to do in... Um, well, I mean, if we have this done by the end of February... We'll see. <laughs> but I'm not trying to stick to month by month in any case right now. Um, so the next thing I'd like to do is one that's more of an original piece, which means we're going to be spending even more time on the sketching phase, but hopefully, based on everything we've learned from this, we'll be spending less time on all of these value study and adjustments and tweaks. Although maybe we will spend more, because we'll have to actually think about the lighting and stuff and plan that rather than having it on our reference here. <sighs> Whew, okay, sorry, it's just a marathon. This is a marathon of a piece, and the idea that it's a study is slightly disheartening, but still, I think it's, you know, it'll, it's good. Do just a little rounding up, not the eraser. I'm going to smooth these off a little bit. They're just jarringly sharp for something that's supposed to be skin shadows. Like, the, the shadows themselves are just not that sharp in the original piece, and they're not going to be that sharp here. The other thing is uh, this tone really ought to arc a little further. I mean, the parallel lines there was making it almost look like celery for some reason. Which, I don't know why specifically celery, but I do know why that wasn't right. So, I got that issue a little bit. Less so. Maybe I've got veggie tails in my brain. That's a fun show. Holds up pretty well. I'm gonna be honest. Like you know, so much stuff doesn't, but that one, stay in power. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's fair as black or gray, and either of those, I'll probably leave them alone for now and for the rest of the night, and we'll come back and look at them again in the future. I'm gonna do some edge cleanup first on this. Um, because we do need to do some of that. The fill tool is nice, but it leaves these nasty edges. I wish it didn't. It would save me a lot of time if it didn't. I'd still have to clean up the edges where the overlap doesn't work, but at least I wouldn't have to worry about them just being overly sharp. Um, we'll probably have to remove the line work of the nose being visible in the final. 
um, since we ended up using our rough sketch as our line work. Which again, maybe we'll go back and do actual inks and like plan that. I don't know. I don't think at this point for this one it would add all that much to it. Um, at some point it might, uh, in a different piece perhaps. Um, especially in a piece that's focused on line work and not on so heavily on value like this one is. I mean, you know, obviously any piece that has line work is still going to have to deal with value. Um, even if it's just literally a single black pen, line density, I mean, you, you see with cross hatching, line density gives value. Whether you want it or not, you're going to have to deal with <laughs> value. So it's interesting. Okay. The interesting thing about these is, and like maybe we do, maybe we don't. Black feels too high contrast up here, but it might be an interesting source of depth as well, which is something that we want. <sighs> Let's see, do those look deeper or do they just... Okay, yeah, it's small enough that it's not like an eye draw, but it does still give those... Just that little extra sense of volume, being able to see the edge here. I'm going to make this one a slightly smaller pen, though, so I can just do, like, quick strokes. Like that. There we go. We'll obviously have some line cleanup, but, like, let's get these in here first and see the final look before we do nitpicky details. Also, so I can practice trying to do these from the arm strokes. Actually, you know what I could do to make this easier is rotate it. If there's anyone really clever in the audience, you could probably guess whether I'm right or left-handed by the angle that I'm tilting this to. Ay -ay -ay. I'd say please don't dox me with that, but I don't know that that's like personally identifiable information. I hope it's not. That'd be really awkward. Alright, so this is one where if we think about it, the shadow should probably still... Actually, if we think about it... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the shadow may be shifting ultimately to the other side of these as we go further this way. So thinking about where that shift's going to happen, we're kind of at that point where it might be like a little narrower here than it is at these far back ones. Yeah, maybe we could even leave those wider. And then we start to get it again, perhaps over here. Yeah, my brain interpreted this little dot um, as an eyeball for a second. Let's see, and of course the secret to those is that they're one of the few things that I actually do want to have properly erased. With a smaller eraser, though. Probably the four. But I do want a little edge of it there still. Also with the four. There we go. That little bit where we're able to see the light getting through. And a little bit here that I have to fix that. <laughs> we may not be able to see the tip of the nose, but we should still see the neutral actual nose. Oh, did I use the overly dark gray? Not for that, just for in here. Huh, interesting. Wild. Nope, because that one was the same. Nope. Nope. Okay. Guess it was just a mistake when I was filling in these little spots. Interesting.
Okay, and yes, we will do line cleanup work, don't worry, on these like black shadows. I just want to sort this little bit out first, too. Make sure it looks like it's believably continuous with that. About right, that one's actually got stuff going too low. Interesting. wonder how that happened. I mean, presumably it was my doing. And then these... Okay, that's interesting to think about. Because what we're not actually going to be seeing in here is the actual shape of it. What we're going to see is the shape of where the light getting through this hole hits it. So it ends up being a sort of curved highlight like that in our middle gray. Same deal on this one. Same deal on this one, bigger though it may be. And that curve is going to reflect both where the light's coming from and the angle of the surface it's hitting, which is just uh, great fun. Actually, it is a fun challenge. This one happens to mostly be in it, but you can see even in there, like it's not the actual edge of the helm because it extends considerably further, even into obscuring these. Which is interesting. I hadn't thought about it going that far. Oh, that is a neat little detail that adds a lot, isn't it? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. I like that. We can even have that. Of course, this one's just a big old scribbly mess, so we're going to have to do a little more cleanup on it. <laughs> there we go. That gives a lot more life to that little bit there, doesn't it? And even if these shadows ought to be darker, I kind of like having them subtle right now. You know, obviously that's always something we can tweak as we go. Now we're finally getting around to that line cleanup I kept saying I was going to do. Old jaw, I'd get here eventually. Thanks for being patient while we worked our way around. This is definitely a phase of, the, of you know, I, I knew it would be this way getting to the helm, where it's like, ooh, I want to do that bit, ooh, I want to do that bit, and just jumping around and um, generally not, <laughs> not focusing on one area long enough to do it right. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we're avoiding that for the most part. Uh, this one's smooth, but it's just a little too small, most likely. Or extend it down. We can really show the curvature and the depth, of, like the thickness of the metal down here uh, with the taper, too, which is good. You know, like... A little bit of shadow holds a lot of detail. I'm always amazed at how much is added to a drawing that I think isn't looking that good, and then you get the shadows in, and you're like, ah, okay, that it was missing the depth. Honestly, this one especially can get away with basically none. These two. Oops, that was not the right color. Or value. Right, this one feels too big for where it's at in the progression. <laughs> not even close. Okay, Let's see. <laughs> We're 
regardless of how deep the shadow ought to be down there, we also want to recognize that at least for a little bit of this, there's a visible under edge. And it's visible to a lesser degree on this part too. Like just kind of a soft taper off in that direction. It'll probably do good there. And like it doesn't really stay visible past this bend, but. Once again, a fast line just ends up looking better and more intentional than a slow, cautious one. It goes against all of my instincts, but it's pretty consistently true. Sorry, this isn't important and will definitely be changed later. I just found it distracting. Okay. I think let's look at the line work next. The, the wing is going to be a pain. I'm going to be honest. It's going to be a pain just like it was in lines and just like it was at every other stage. Um, that's okay. That's not inherently a bad thing. Um, but like we are just going to have to deal with it when the time comes. Okay, yep, full on hyper bright there. A lot of this stuff really is this max brightness. It's just how I want to represent it. <laughs> I hate to say it, this wiggle doesn't look horrible. Just the casually thrown down wobble here looks kind of okay, which is crazy to me. Um, I may not touch it. <laughs> like Maybe we'll do some texturing or something else, but... like I don't know, it just it works. It even has the slight correct tilt, like sometimes just not thinking and just doing is in fact the correct choice. Um, throws me for a loop when it works though. And of course it's not the kind of thing that works until you've already practiced trying, like actually attempting to think and plan stuff. And then you sort of get an eye for this, for how to do it. And then in the future, you can just be like, ah, I'm just going to block this in real quick. And then it works. Brains are weird. <laughs> okay. A little bit actually needs to be the dark too. Yeah, we're obviously going to have a lot of edge cleanup up here from all just the throwing down fill bucket and weird detaily places. But that's okay. Think about how we want the shadows on this. Obviously, they're not going to be exactly what they were originally because the angle that we've got this at is also like a little different. Just wasn't able to quite recreate what I was, what the original looked like as it bent around here. And that's okay. Although actually, it makes me think that what I was actually aiming for was a sort of this. Not, not that gray though. The other gray. Huh. And it almost looks like I had another, like inner edge or something on that. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but this actually does look like it bends the more correct expected way now. <laughs> Maybe I did do it right. I thought I'd put a lot of time into trying to sort that out. That makes more sense. That gap is still too big compared to the original, but eh, what you gonna do? I guess that is one advantage of not going off of an example like this is... Um, you don't have an original to compare against, you just have, you know, it still has to look realistic, but it's not, like, an immediate, like, opposite, like, ah, here's what it ought to be. Of course, this feels like, you know, when sometimes you get math assignments and they give you the answers so you can check afterwards? This feels like that, where it's like, okay, I've done, I've had a go at it, I'm looking at the answer sheet, I'm checking what I did right, I'm tweaking what I did wrong, we're learning it for next time. And, uh, yeah, 
then when we get to the actual test being a drawing of our own make uh, hopefully we'll be better prepared hopefully ah, let's see this area is just such an inner tangle of shadows I'm going to mostly try to keep it reasonable, reasonable values here, because all of it is still at minimum the same as the helm here, like other than a few noticeably dark patches, which are comparatively rare, and which do follow the contour of these different like little ring bits, which is also interesting. This one does this. This one doesn't come in until here. It's definitely meant to be more of like muck on the metal than it is an actual shadow in this particular one's case. Um, yeah, it doesn't come in until like way over. That one's like a one little bright spot amidst the otherwise. I keep wanting to say tarnish, but the whole premise of this particular material that her helm is made of is that it doesn't do that. Um, even if her Arn Honor ultimately got kind of tarnished, um, she and her helmet did not. And that was rather the point. It's the unalloyed gold. Because uh, the lore in those games is so just insanely deep and convoluted and fun and fascinating. But it does feel like actual like history homework, trying to interpret it. <laughs> And the way people format their discussions on it also feels like the kind of thing you see in, like, I don't know, like a history lecture, uh, or uh, not a lecture, but a, uh, well, what do you call it? Con not convention, but I think you know what I mean. Conference. Conference. I don't like how patchy this ends up. This has ended up looking. Maybe once we get the rest of it in here, but I think losing some of these detail edge lines is actually pretty bad for the helmet's overall readability, which is interesting. Or not the helmet's overall, but these ribbons. Some of those lines are pretty critical, actually, which is interesting. Realize that there are there are still some properly deep shadows on here. I'll probably just like emphasize them a little bit in uh, particularly dark areas, like in other shadows. Oh, that's a bad tangent line. A little better. Or in areas where they're particularly deep in the original, like over here. And for a few others, because I know there's some where it's a really bold. Yeah, like this one. These are probably going to take longer than I can do tonight to fully finish out. But we can have a good go at it, and then that way tomorrow we've got something to work off of. We're not getting to the wing, though. Tragically. 
because it's fascinating, honestly. And I think it'll be, I think it'll actually be much more fun to shade than it was to draw. Um, because finding the finding the right places to put highlights and shadows is going to be really interesting with the 3D like sort of triangular pattern um, that these have. So they're going to be fun. I'm looking forward to them. Another thing I just want to check is I realize it's a pretty smooth gradient, truthfully, on how these shift, but I do want to make sure that some of these broad strokes ones are in the right place rather than just committing to them because that's where I left it last stream and I must have meant something with how I put it. And the answer being I did not. Because I think that threw us off on the fabric shading a little bit too as I overcommitted to, oh, I've already blocked it in. And I was like, no. No, you haven't. Not with any sort of brain power, anyway. You just let the fill tool have a grand old time. It doesn't need to be that defined out that far over. I know obviously the helmet has something of a splotchy texture to it, which I'm kind of inclined to leave alone for the most part. Obviously seeing the nose through the helm is still an issue, but yeah. Yeah, that isn't getting the bent and creased look that I need. Maybe the secret is that we need these mid we need the next tone darker too. I mean I can even sort of see it. There we go. That should, after entirely too much fine focus detail and not that important of a detail, that should get more of a... Well, it's still not really. I guess this ultimately ends up all being kind of in the darker shadow part, doesn't it? Interesting. Now this looks a little bit like a gremlin -y face, like you got the eye here looking backwards and like a big old stinking goblin ear out of a mouth. Interesting. <laughs> Definitely not intentional. By either me or the actual original, like the character designers. This whole section's a little darker. Definitely be using a bigger brush for this. But yeah, I don't know. I haven't really got much more to say, and we're getting close to the end of the stream. Uh, but yeah, just sort of, at this point, it's just kind of pinpointing specific details that catch the light, um, finding 
specific sections that you want to sort of call out as being lighter and other ones that you may want to call out as being a little darker. Keep this to be a real fine point. I think that both of these are ones that are worth re-emphasizing a little bit. This one less so. Not until we get to the bottom here. Let's see. We do still want some shadow. Definitely some there. Definitely going to be some here. Not so much on this one. As it goes this way, of course, it's catching more and more of the light. Makes sense that there'd be a lot of the real bright bit up here. And if I do it like that, it's too symmetrical. It's gonna look like it's just an intentional decoration. Or like just awkward patchy bit. You can do like just a little bit up here though. Okay. Some of this may end up being true black, we'll see. Although even our true black isn't quite true black, which thank heavens or else it'd be even darker. And the contrast would be even higher. <laughs> um see oh part of the issue with this not looking curved is the lack of a shadow on it over here the penumbra okay yeah that one's looking a lot better now you can even get like a little bit of a shadow here to imply that it's bent in not quite the intended way We'll get some highlights where some of these happen to curve in the right place. A little bit on the tip and edge there. A little bit more on this one. Lining up. And more into the shadows for a lot of it. Keep on keeping on with some of these. Another one where like the level of definition on these sh these lines is uh, pretty worth remembering to include. I do need to be careful that I don't lose context of like the overall like line weight on the piece. But these are some of the few like this level of detail and this level of shadow on them, so it's not too bad. very least getting the shadows and especially with the acknowledgement that these shadows are going to be a little bit different on each of the different sections of these little metallic interwoven ribbons because they each have the light hitting them a little bit differently they're all like not quite lined up some are higher or lower than others that kind of thing shows on shadows once again shadows are just great for adding volume to things. It's really wonderful. I'm making this whole one darker. Also, the fact that it should really just be this. <laughs> um, and maybe like a little bit of implied that, and then the rest of this actually belongs to the dark gray. sort of see coming even from whoops even from over here because there's pretty deep ridges uh, form in some of those Let's 
see. Work our way through this. Whoops. Straight line alert. Yeah. And definitely get that sorted. Super duper duper. Yeah, there we go. Ah, not too much shadow on this one. The less less tarnished bit, so its shadows also aren't quite as deep as they would be on some other ones. Again, not tarnished in the literal sense of the gold tarnishing, or in the tarnished character, but in the sense of being dirty. Um, which isn't literally what tarnished means, so I'm using it in the wrong sense. That's okay. There we go. Goes a little more character. And then this section. This section was the one that inspired the need for these slightly darker lines. So I should definitely make sure that I'm getting them in here. I may even go down to a two for some of these ones though. Because they're not really that deep. They just need to still be in the final. But yeah, some of these ones are definitely deep enough that they ought to be in here. And it doesn't have to be all the way. I can sort of do this piecemeal. -y. Yeah, like this is definitely a section that would have... If I'd known that I was doing the inks when I was, then I would have uh, not gone quite as uh, loosey-goosey with some of it. But I'm going to lighten up a lot of these to the one tier higher. It's not the ones in this section. They're just like some of them really are supposed to be that dark, but a lot of them are a little too jarringly dark next to the really bright highlights. An issue down here, too. They end up looking like stray scribbles rather than intentional shadowed lines. Because they just contrast so much. This one we'll see. It's actually a pretty defined line, even in the original. Or in the reference, rather. Okay. There is even like a little bit of a bright patch on this one. Some of them bent just the right way to catch it. There we go. Even this catches like a little bit right at its apex. Yeah, and these little details, this level of detail in the helm, where a lot of the actual focus is, is why I wanted to make sure I had lots of different uh, shades, not shades, but um, values available in the lighter range. Because this is where like the focus is, not necessarily on these exactly, but on the helm and its details. And you want those to really have the pop that they need. That said, I'm going to lie, uh, trim down some of the uber brightness on those two because they're a little dominating our last couple minutes here um, is truthfully I don't think I actually meant for this one to be as bold as it ended up being all down here goes to the darker one and then the shadow itself ends up at the notably darker one, which actually lines up better with what's happening over here. Helps imply the right layers, all that jazz. So all good there. All right, I never fully cleaned up the edges of the gray either from the autofill, so that's going to be a thing for a little bit. It's okay, though. 
less of an issue, really. And this one, this one definitely shouldn't all be that level. Starters, a pretty sizable chunk of this isn't. There's parts where various other ones aren't. Make it a little more on. There we go. There we go. That's better. It's still like they. It's got the focal and the leading up this way without dominating over top of this actual bold focus. Honestly, I could even leave one more patch kind of in the middle if we really wanted to, and it wouldn't be out of place. Be a little out of place, but you know. There's this stray one, which also needs to be on the slightly darker one. Once again, these darks are our mid-gray. So it's all in the context. This was way too bright of a highlight for some former areas, and it's almost too dark for some things here. Funny how that works. Anyway, yeah, now that we've got that in, that whole section seems to have a lot more depth to it. Um, actually pretty okay with the rim itself being kind of darker. It works. It's not exactly what you'd expect from the original, but it works well enough as a representation there. That's the last thing for volume that I really want to look at. Is uh, make sure that we've got something coming out here to imply that it's hooking over. Because we've got good ones for pretty much all of this. And like even this one's reasonable for where it's at. That just gives it all a little more of a kick. <laughs> yeah, not perfect, but ultimately a lot of that has actually turned out quite well. So next time, um, I guess that's next week, unless we do a bonus stream, which I'm not going to promise this weekend. It's it, looking to be a busy one. Um, but we'll deal with the feathers here, which should be fun, and the hair, which might be fun. If I... If I try to build off of what we learned with the fur about how to do detailed highlights without actually doing all the detail then it should be interesting and then it'll just be a matter of uh sorting out the fabric in a way that makes me look or makes me a little happier and uh yeah <sighs> values will be looking pretty good and then we can have a little fun playing with um well hues and saturations although truthfully I don't know that we'll mess with saturations too much. I mean, we, we, we will. I mean, it's an important part of the relationship. So yeah, we'll definitely mess with saturation. Don't know what I'm saying. Because as, as we learned back at the start of this part of the process, um, value is essentially the underlying black and white. Hue is the color of saran wrap you choose, and saturation is how many layers of saran wrap you put over the black and white to make it look more like the color. <laughs> if you put too much, then you just completely lose any of the value. If you put too little, then you really can't even see the hue, because it's mostly just value. But, uh, yeah, we'll try to find a good middle ground. Uh, CSP, Clip Studio Paint, the tool we're using, in particular, has some excellent uh tools for converting from this 
and, or for, well, A, there's obviously layering. We can just create layers over it. That's easy. But there's also ways to convert directly from grayscale into a full, like, correct saturation hued piece. Um, and there's some interesting tools with that that I'd like to experiment with. So we'll be jumping into all that at the rate we're going next week. I mean, we'll see, you know. I don't want to promise anything. Exceptions always find a way of happening, don't they? But yeah, we're on track. And then who knows? Like, you know, I'm thinking we'll have this sorted by the end of the month. I can't promise it, but I'm thinking that'll be the case. And then March, we can move on to creating some original stuff and using these skills that we built up. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what we end up doing. That's still a couple weeks away. Although not that many weeks away. So if you've got anything that you're holding off until March for, get started on that. You've got less than two weeks. You've got 12 days. 13 if you count today. But where I'm at, there's only a couple hours left in today. Um, so I can't count it particularly. Unfortunately, what that also means, it's about time for me to wrap up. So while it has been fun, I'm going to have to let y'all go for the night. Thanks to anyone who came out, which um, wasn't anyone, but that's okay. I, I realize that especially these value streams don't have a lot of draw, even though they have a lot of drawing. Uh, but that's okay, because this is... I feel like this has been a value... <laughs> I'm just full of puns, a valuable learning experience, and that this is something that's going to make all of my drawings here on out better. Um, I think this has actually been great. Um, so thanks to Proko for a very well-timed email. I'm on one of his email newsletter list things, uh, one that was just an excellent exercise to prep for this. And then, yeah, I, th I think this has been great. This has been awesome, actually. And... I've been feeling excited for streams again. I'll be honest, during the last round of Blender where I wasn't like, we were basically repeating the same mistakes as before without having learned anything. I was so not excited about each stream. I was like, oh, I don't want to prep for this. But I also know if I don't prep for this, it's going to be even worse. And then even when I would prep for it, it'd only be like useful for solving something for 15 minutes. And then we had another problem. And I was just like, okay, I'm kind of, this is, this is work. This isn't fun. Um, which is why I asked that one rather abruptly, because I was like, I'm not learning any from this, and I'm not enjoying it, and no one's watching it. Like, stinking, why am I doing it? <laughs> um, it's like eating chips you hate alone. Why? There, there's no peer pressure to eat them. There's no joy you get from eating them. There's no nutritional value. Why the heck are you doing it? Just chuck them. Or give them away or something. But, like, don't eat them. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we did there. And this, this, this project has been much more fun and much more interesting. Uh, yeah, so hope y'all have a good one. Whatever time it may be for you, I hope that you make the best use of what's left of your day. And I uh, hope that it goes well. Until next time, have a good one, y'all.